about that a bit later on. But now, hospitals across the UK are doing their absolute best to try and cope with the surge in the number of COVID patients. But as we're seeing in the papers and on the news, they are stretched to almost breaking point. But if you go online, you could find a very different story. People are posting videos that appear to show empty corridors and wards. Now, these videos are being promoted as evidence that the pandemic isn't as bad as the government says it is. So to see what the truth is behind these conspiracy theories, I got exclusive access to hospital to find out what's really going on. OK, so here's the entrance. Look, it's absolutely dead. Nobody here, folks. Where's all the people dying from the second wave, hey? Watching these videos that are doing the rounds on social media at the moment is incredibly frustrating for me. As a doctor, I know the immense pressure that NHS staff are under to save as many lives as they can during this pandemic. But it's also terrifying because these videos are so persuasive. Ghost town, never seen it so quiet. Not buying this at all. But just because a hospital has empty space doesn't mean that they're not overwhelmed. To prove that, University College Hospital has granted me special access to show that these videos are seriously misleading. So I've got my mask on, I've got my camera rolling, I'm going to go in and see how easy it is to find some empty spaces in this hospital. And initially it might seem the videos could have some truth. So look, I've just come out from the lift and there is absolutely no one here. This is meant to be one of London's busiest hospitals. And here we are, loads of empty beds and trolleys here. I mean, all this unused equipment. Look at that, totally empty. This is, should be a surgical area. And then out here, you know, the lights aren't even on. This is completely empty, no dying patients, no evidence of a pandemic, it's spotless. So what's going on? The thing is, this is a massive hospital. It's always going to be possible to find empty beds and empty corridors to film in. But the problem is anyone who's watching the footage that I've just shot can easily be fooled into thinking that this hospital, and therefore every hospital in the NHS, is not overburdened by the effects of COVID. And, as Professor Hugh Montgomery knows, that couldn't be further from the truth. He knows that because Hugh is on the front line of this fight, working in intensive care. How does it make you feel when you see things that are really not true being said in these videos? You can sort of understand it. If you look out here, there's nothing going on. You go in the lobby, there's nothing going on. And if you walk into an outpatient department or a pharmacy, there's nothing going on. And indeed, the problem is that these sick patients have sucked all the resource from the rest of the hospital into one place. The staff are now all working inside an intensive care unit. And those are locked because they're high risk areas. But it makes me very sad because when that message gets out, it encourages people to behave in a way that spreads this disease. Hugh is off shift at the moment, but he's going inside filming on his phone to show us what's really happening behind closed doors while my cameraman and I wait outside to make sure we're not disturbing critical care. After a few minutes, Hugh emerges with hard evidence of a busy hospital, which he sends to my phone. OK, so you've sent me the video here. Yeah. Let's have a look. Hugh meets David Howell, Clinical Director for Intensive Care at University College Hospital. He shows Hugh what used to be a recovery bay. Gracious. OK, so even for me, David, that's a shock. But this should have some trolleys in. Correct. Of people who've just come out who are awake. Yes. Having had an operation, who were just being watched for a bit before they go to a ward. Yes. It's and this is a full-blown intensive care unit. Well, so let's just look at that patient there. We've got probably a nurse at the bedside. We've got two, four, six people there who are going to need to turn this patient. And then we've got all the support people bringing stuff in and out. What, I mean, what is immediately apparent to me is it's so busy. There are loads of people doing tons of work. And it's not just there. I mean, you'll find if you scroll through slightly, I've taken you through to the operating theatre. Oh, but here's an operating theatre. Hello, everybody. Hello there. Hello. 
here's a couple of patients so in an yeah, operating theatre. Normal. Now, normally there's one patient on an operating bed with a light and a surgeon and some scrub nurses and so forth. No, you've now got an operating theatre with two intensive care patients with all the intensive care going on. You go around here, Hugh, this yeah. would be normally where the anaesthetic room is. It would be, yeah. And the doors are off. And there's and another got, patient. Your surgeon, your nurses, your bed, your ventilator, your anaesthetic equipment, your porter, everything has moved to intensive care. Yes, and, and everyone, there's 12 of these operating theatres and they're all completely full. So as we go down the corridor, every theatre's full. Uh, recovery is completely full. Our paediatric recovery is full. All these spaces converted from their normal hospital use to hold as many intensive care patients as they can. This is now about saving as many lives as possible as hospitals struggle to cope with an enormous number of critically ill patients. How dangerous are the conspiracy videos? Um, if they're taken seriously by the people who watch them, they're very dangerous. You can spread this virus without even getting ill yourself or even knowing that you're ill. But somewhere down that chain of infection, someone's going to die. These baseless stories make the jobs of all the NHS staff who've been working so hard through the pandemic very, very much more difficult. They undermine all of our efforts. So what's really important to remember is that rather than just believing something that was uploaded online, the people that we should trust are the people who are fighting the virus on the front lines every single day. Such an important issue. Incredible access this. And as a doctor, how did you feel doing that film? I think it's, it's very easy to kind of be furious at the people sharing these videos and believing them. But I think, and some of them are bad actors, but some of them are just going, why are the hospitals empty? And they're misinterpreting it. Yeah. So it's not, you're not a fool if you look at this footage and go, what, what, I don't understand yeah, it. Yeah. Is there really a pandemic? But yeah, it's, it's complicated. It's fake news with real footage, which uh, is odd. The government are actually spending some money on trying to stop this fake news. Yeah, I mean, they've set aside, so councils are now setting aside, you know, tens of millions of pounds to try and wage a war on this. But of course, the whole of social media is, is kind of swamped with it. So yeah. very uh, difficult. And the NHS is underway in this, what, this delivering this huge vaccination programme at the moment. 30 new centres or new vaccination centres uh, will be opening across the country. This is brilliant news. It's it's just so unusual to kind of go, oh, yeah, it's definitely good news. It's like we're, yeah. we're allowed to feel good about it. Like we really are doing a good job on this. Some of the centres are really funny. So it's like <laughs> they're in Ikea. They're Shopping centres. Like the Peaky Blinders film set <laughs> has got this uh, Can you imagine turning up to the Peaky Blinders film set? There it is. And do, you not, do you not feel like a year ago, if you'd said go and get a vaccination on the set, You'd think this is bonkers, but now you yeah. kind of go, yeah, I guess another day, yeah, that's Who what cares, we're doing. though, if you're getting yeah. the vaccination? And they do it with the flat cap, actually. I, they, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, that's the part of the, the process, isn't it? Uh, we all know that Zand is uh, a huge favourite of celebrities around the country. You know, he's friends with Beyonce and all kinds of other people. Um, and they've all been tweeting you as well. Uh, actually, lots of questions about the vaccine. Um, we'll answer as many as we can on the show, but celebrities, um, like uh, First Date's Fred Siriex did yes. tweet you the other day, actually asked a really, really important question important question. Um, is it a possibility the second dose of the vaccine might be delayed to